You all have seen Mario Kart before. It's the classic multiplayer game that we all know and love dearly from Nintendo. But this might look a little different from the Mario Kart you're familiar with. There's a reason for that. This is in the browser. This isn't by Nintendo at all. It's actually written, of all things, React. So how the hell did somebody recreate a full 3D game such as Mario Kart entirely within the React framework? Bugs and all. Obviously, we're gonna have to take a look at that. First and foremost, shout out to Alex Luneki Pio. I'll never pronounce his name correctly. For all the hard work he has done on this project, it's been going viral, nonstop on Twitter, and I'm really hyped that it's finally open source so we can dig into this project, how it works, and most importantly, actually play with the code a bit, which I'm hyped to do. So, from Alex. Hey, dear 3JS, WebGL, and React 3 Fiber community. Thanks a lot for your support through this project. It's big and it's coming through. Today I announce the project is going open source. After discussion with the wonderful Robin Payout, who made the Wind Waker project, he's decided that, fuck it, he's going to make it open source. I actually chatted with Alex a bit beforehand because I've wanted to do this video for a while now, and he was really concerned about the code being open source and the possibility of Nintendo going after him for it. But there's too much value in this code being open that it's worth having it if possible. We'll see how this goes. I sincerely hope the additional eyes that come from my video aren't going to increase the likelihood that he gets DMCA'd, but this project is so cool. One more quick thing I don't want to miss is that Alex isn't just open sourcing the project. There are a lot of pieces that he felt were valuable outside of Mario Kart JS, such as the use gamepad hook, which is a React hook that gives you immediate access to a Bluetooth game controller, which is dope. Getting your controller working in the browser was never easy, but it was always doable. With this hook, it's now easy. He also open sourced Kart Controller JS, which is for managing the actual physics of the cart. Really cool to see these projects external, separate, and able to exist even if the worst possible thing happens in the original repo gets DMCA'd. Really dope to see the work he's put in here. Huge shout out. As mentioned previously, this is all using React, specifically React 3 Fiber. If you're not already familiar with React 3 Fiber, I have a whole video dedicated to it. The quick TLDR is it's a wrapper of 3JS, which is the easiest way to do 3D rendering in WebGL and the canvas that lets you write React components that create those 3D objects, which allows a developer like Alex here to create something as crazy as a Mario Kart clone in the browser. Just looking at the code is fun, but I can't help but play. Let's grab this code. I'll clone this quick. Package lock. He's using NPM. I mean, to each their own. And here, same deal. You can even use your mobile phone as a control style, which is super cool. The fact that there are this many options is dope. I kind of want to go fix that keyboard typo. Let's do that and see how the uh, hot reloading is. So I will move this like that so you can see the browser when I save. I'm saving right now. Do you know how insane that is? If you've ever been a game developer, you know how obnoxious hot reloading is in your game engine. Usually you have to wait like a while and then have some hack to skip to the exact screen you were on because most game engines don't persist your state and location in this way when you make these types of changes. Some have interactive editors that let you go into the environment to make changes, but this concept of like, I just fix the typo or bring it back, save, and as soon as I save now, it's less than half a second, probably like closer to a tenth of a second from when I save to when I see the update. Very, very nice. But this is just the landing for selecting what control style you want, which first off, super cool. You can just write HTML in this because it is the browser and it is rendering elements. But once you get into the actual game, you'll see that we have actions, add player, state, don't love this is all vanilla JS. We can work with that. Here's the canvas, which as I mentioned before, this is what renders the majority of the application. This is where all the 3D stuff gets rendered within. And this canvas is being imported from React 3 Fiber. React 3 Fiber is the thing orchestrating all of this as well as providing a ton of the useful packages like the physics package, like Dre, which has the ability to introduce keyboard controls and a few other things that I'm sure will be very useful as we dig deeper. But I wanna take a look at the experience because this is where most of the game is. That said, you'll notice here, it's a pretty interesting argument architecture. It's so cool. Like if you're a game dev, this might make you a little stressed, but if you're a react dev, this should make sense. Preload all is their preload component for grabbing assets ahead of time. So you don't have to wait for those things to come in later. This is that loading screen that you see at the beginning when you first load, that's preloading all of the assets. Then we have the physics, which is the helper wrapper context that gives the context of how the physics system works to all children underneath it. Once you've mounted this, all the children have access to the physics, which is important if you want children to know how the physics works. Underneath that, we have the keyboard controls, which are important because the whole experience is going to depend on them. And then we have the experience. But well, this is the usual nesting that we expect in React, the top to bottom state flow that makes it a lot easier to parse what's going on where and most importantly, why. But the experience is where most of the stuff is. So let's take a look here. Network bananas, set network bananas is use multiplayer state. Where does this come from? Playroom kit, interesting. 
So that's the library they're using for the management of the, the multiplayer stuff. And this must be where the bananas are that have been set by other players. Makes sense. And there's a custom key to keep track of that here too. Points, loading error is used curve path points, curve path.json. This is the path for the level is what I would assume. Network shells, this is for shells that are currently on the network. This is how it's managing the different states and the things going on within the game. And you even can use a use effect to handle things when we're adjusting in this case to Paris scale. This will only happen when points changes, which only happens once it loads in. So we use curve path points, we get this, and then we scale it based on the points that we received and set the new points to the scaled version. I don't love the name pointist, but I, I get what he's doing here. And this is where I think things get really interesting. Camera is an empty ref. The fact that the camera's an object and also a component that you can move around is one of the coolest and trippiest parts of using something like 3JS because your camera is one of the most important parts of doing 3D anything. And we've never, as web devs, probably thought about a camera. We just have the viewport and whatever's on the screen's on the screen. The idea of a camera that can move around in 3D space is fascinating and it gives you two places to change what the user sees instead of just the one being the browser window itself. And use frame is a fun helper. This runs outside of React so that it can update and run this code on every frame. It's usually used for updating refs so that it can happen outside of the React render loop, which is one of the many hacks necessary to make something like React 3 Fiber as performant as it is. Oof, I don't love this, but I know I'm a minority with my hatred of long ternaries. Teach their own. Here's the controller component that returns once you've actually set up your controls correctly. I would have made this a separate component rather than embedding it this way, but to each their own. It's also a solo project up until recently, so not sure how much he expected us to dig through every line of code here. Game started and players not map. Here's the player dummies. Here's the perspective camera, which only mounts once the game started. Here's the map. Here's the item box. Here's the coin. Here's a ground. Here, I'll just show you as a fun example of how powerful this is. Let's quickly get in so that we see that box at the start. Confirm. Okay, see that box at the start there? Let's make four of them, but they need to be different positions. So I'll just do negative... 10, 0, 10. Now, with just that one change, we have four boxes instead of one. No, it's a simple, silly example, but I think that is so cool that all of the things we know from React, all of the syntax and behaviors we're familiar with, you can just make more of a thing. You define this reusable piece, an item box that has all of this crazy logic going on for how it works, how it aligns the rigid body, how it manages collisions, how it paints its textures, how its mesh has shadows. All of these behaviors exist within this component that now can be trivially reused and props passed to and from it however you want. So cool. And these are the moments, like the first time I played with 3 Fiber and realized you can just make a new component was crazy. It's not like these are running in the same place that a div would. Like these aren't running in the same JS thread that React is, at least not all the time. They do when they initially render. But all the stuff going on here, specifically the frames, the ref here, which I'm assuming is being used for the position. Yes, this should have been named position. Not a big deal. By doing this within the use frame hook, we're able to do all of this off the main thread that React is running on. This logic doesn't block React which is so cool because React can be used to effectively say, here's where different things go, rather than being used to say, here is where every single frame gets rendered. And that split, as weird as it feels initially, of the place where you're saying what elements exist is different from the place where your animation logic lives. I've actually found it to be really nice for constructing your state for your games. And I've been increasingly impressed with the things that you can do with this framework, as well as the quality of the code that I see coming out of it. The fact that it's this easy for me as a person who hasn't done much game dev to read this code and understand what's going on is incredible. It's silly, but just like calling a map on a JavaScript object to render 3D assets is mind blowing. Like that is so cool. That's so cool. Can we DIY a network banana to uh, make a fake one here? I'm assuming this is the initial state. So what are the things it needs? ID and position. And we can leave the rest out. Say so ID fake banana. And the position is going to be the same X, Y, Z. So I'll just copy this position, delete the rest of these, and drop this in here. It should hopefully, maybe not. Oh, because it, it's our the component's already initialized, so that's not going to add it and like reinitialize it. What I could do instead: work bananas equals that. Change that quick. Hmm. Maybe the position for the bananas works different. Let's see how it expects things. Again, this is what happens when you don't have TypeScript, but we can work around that. Go to banana, 
oh, position has X, Y, and Z. That's a fun thing I've seen in a lot of game solutions, inconsistency in how positions are defined. Cool. I'm still going to drop this here just to make it easier so I don't have to reset the state. Let's see if we now have a banana. We do. Look at that. It's silly, but I think that's so cool that you can just write JavaScript code and it works. And any libraries or tools you're familiar with from JavaScript land will behave here pretty much exactly how you would expect. Obviously, some rendering things like Tailwind's not going to do what you expect here because this is running in the GPU on the canvas, but basically all the other libraries you use well. In fact, I recall we saw this is using Zustand for some things. Yeah, it's using Zustand for the core game state. Yeah. That's a lot of things in your Zustand store. But how cool is it that a library like that can just be dropped in and now we can call use store anywhere in the app and have access to all of the game state. If you guys didn't know this, Zustand was actually originally written to be used within things like React 3 Fiber. It's by Poimanders, who are the same people that made React 3 Fiber. And Zustand was meant to be a state library fast enough to work in those 3D environments. And here we're actually seeing it used properly. Yeah, this is so cool. I love seeing stuff like this. I highly recommend taking a look at this code base if you're curious what crazy 3D games and things in React look like, because it's a phenomenal example. I think this is super, super cool. I know React might not be the most popular choice for games, but it's certainly one of the most interesting. Huge shout out to Alex for the work he did here. Thank you for open sourcing this. Genuinely really pumped with the project. Check it out if you haven't already, and make sure you check out my other video covering React 3 Fiber, because this stuff is so cool. Thank you guys as always. I'll see you next time. Peace nerds.